the table just to show you what are the tools that can be used to increase the uh, biodiversity in the farm as I mentioned before higher diversity in the farm will cause the higher stability within the farm ecosystem and it reduce the pest problem and always pest always a problem in the farm where it can reduce the yield okay what are the tool that can be used to increase the diversity the first one is the intercropping crop rotation cover crop and multi-species grazing Okay, let's go and talk about what is the intercropping. Well, as it says intercrop, that means we plant different type of plant beside each other. Okay, that means we cultivate more than one crop at a time in a, an area. If you remember, when one of the way to increase the uh, use of the energy or sunlight and uh, energy if to have a cover crop then intercropping also can be part of the cover crop because it's increase the sunlight capture with the intercropping the benefits the benefits of intercropping we can increase the natural enemy population and it's also reduce the ability of the pest insect to recognize their host in the intercropping, each of the insects have their own uh, host. For example, we may plant a cruciferous plant such as uh, brassica and uh, where the host is the lepidopteran such as uh, diamond bat moth and the next row we can plant the tuberous plant and the row next after the tuberous plant we can plant back the cruciferous plant so in the middle of this cruciferous plant we will have this tuberous plant with these activities intercropping the holes from the cruciferous plants and the cannot cannot find the other area for the cruciferous because in the middle there is already different type of plants Though the insect cannot recognize, it don't have ability to recognize their host. The idea are the rows of the plants. So this is the advantage of the intercropping. And naturally, it's going to reduce the number of the pests. This is just for examples to show the intercrop between the banana and vegetables like you say they have banana vegetables and banana so this is the vegetables crop pest if you plant another rose after banana is uh, another vegetables uh, I mean leafy vegetables so basically the insect uh, have problem to recognize the host yeah, because they have the banana in between and also another type of people can intercrop with coffee with pepper the second way is to increase the diversity of the farm is the crop rotation what's the uh, advantage of the crop rotations are it can break the weeds and pest life cycles yeah and also uh, provide complementary fertilization among the crops because in the crop rotation we plants at the same area we don't plant the same type of crop for the next season the example can do uh, here is you can cultivate nitrogen fixing legume crops before the corn and is uh, this activities also can reduce the build up of pests and insect pests and also weeds of the area this is because if you plant the corn the insect for the corn uh, if you plant the corn in the first season and the next season we at the same area we plant the legume crops the insect for the corn and the legume crops basically are a different types. Therefore, 
the insect don't have time to build out a high population at the area. Yeah. And also, this uh, crop rotation activities can reduce the soil erosions and increase the soil quality. This is to show you at the one uh, area, we can the first year we can at the same uh, we can plant the leafy area. The second year we plant the fruits, and the third year we plant roots. And we just rotate the type of plants at the same area. Never plant the same plants at the same area at the uh, two season in a row. It is going to show a different uh, examples of the crop rotations. Okay, and then come to the cover crops, compost, and fertilizer. Yeah, so. Cover crops, we, as we mentioned before, what is the cover crops? Yeah, uh, in the energy flows just now. Okay, it can maintain the soil structures and prevent erosion. And since the cover crop will cover the soil, therefore it reduces the temperature of the soil at the area. Okay, it's a uh, moderate the temperature. And also, because it's covered when it is rain, the water can be keep uh, in the soil at a longer period. The evapotranspiration process will reduce. Yeah? And also, it can uh, enhance the soil erosion. It enhance the soil erosion in the farm. Okay. Uh, this is to show the cover crops of radishes and cereal rye. Okay, and the, what is the difference between the crop rotate, um, intercropping and cover crop? You might, from the picture, you might say, oh, this is the intercropping. Yeah, the, the difference with the intercropping and cover crop is with the cover crop, intercropping, you may plant this different type of crop at the same time however for the cover crop what usually practice is they will plant the main crop first so the first slide there they have a uh, at the, uh, the bottom side there they have a corn the main crop at that area is a corn when the corn reaching the end stage of their development they will start planting the cover crop such as here is the turnip when the time for harvest the corn then the turnips grow have a more sunlight can use more sunlight and it grow faster and it can be uh, the land areas is not being wasted while waiting for the next planting season for the corn so this is the cover crop. The next one is compost. As mentioned before, compost is good to increase the soil fertility. And this is a type of a natural or organic fertilizer. In the compost, we can get all the material from the farm environment within the farm itself. As the example, if the farm, in the farm, you should have a crop and we're going to have a, a animal such as cattle, goat or a chicken. So, the crop residues can be put in the compost pile and the residues from the animal also can be used, put into the compost pile. And all this can become uh, this raw material will mix it together and we did it, it takes a few months, three to six months to process. Within that time, a few gases, yeah, ammonia, carbon dioxide, methane are going to be released to the air. And in the end, going to have a compost product. During the composting period, as you can see, they are going to have a methane of that release. Many of the 
farms such as cattle, big cattle farm in United States, where they have producing the bio or renewable energy from this methane. They will collect the cow dung, yeah, and process it, then become the compost. And, the, and during that process, they collected the methane gas and they sell the, this gas to the industry. However, this uh, process is not necessary in the big scale. If you have a small farm and you conduct, uh, have a lot, uh, always do the compost uh, activities, can always collect the methane and use it for the farm activities for the uh, farm's uh, energy yeah okay let's see how the finished compost look like so if can if you can imagine all the full uh, crop residues yeah they have been chopped into small pieces and put in the uh, compost pile at the same time also we have all these organic matters uh, feces from the animal and put it also in the compost uh, pile it doesn't look nice but when the good compost system uh, if the process of composting done correctly this is how is the finished products look like it's very fine and have contained many organisms and nutrients and it's also have a good capacity for absorb water yeah and compost also has been known to be uh, can be used as a slow release fertilizers because it releases the nutrients slowly compared to the uh, this compound fertilizer.